And welcome viewers to our bonus feature segment. More spectacular imagery here from the total electron content forecast. I would note one thing. We are seeing an oddity here north of Cuba, north of Hispaniola here in the Caribbean. We've been seeing that for a couple days there. Sort of an extended feature. The total electron content forecast shows you the most likely areas for GPS errors. So your GPS satellite is orbiting the planet geosynchronously, meaning it's over the same spot of the Earth at about 12,500 miles of altitude. And so that's a very high orbit, a very high, very circular orbit to maintain its geosynchronous status. And when it has to communicate through a lot of electrons, typically around the equator at noon, you see massive errors from your GPS. That's why you use Wi-Fi location accuracy services to make it more likely that, that your GPS isn't off by thousands of miles. So here's just a diagram of Earth Van Allen belts if you've never checked it out. We just show it daily to show folks what we're looking at and sort of put that in context. And particles can cause charging hazards. We see some minor ones here over the Central Pacific. Here's the one-year chart to put the relativistic electrons surrounding planet Earth in context. There you go. That's from Solon.info. And here's the most recent three days of measurements from the GOES 16 and 17. And we're just moving into warning territory there on both the satellites while we record the video. Next, the forecast model. You can see the forecast here off by quite a bit. And we typically do see a reduction in the electron flux during coronal hole wind streams, which is a reason to expect it to uh, be a little bit lower here once again. I, I'm not expecting this to be correct, but the NOAA forecast is usually pretty accurate. Next, we're going to look at the ionosphere. The F flare is located at about 300 kilometers of altitude, and here are the vibrational frequencies. There's a lot of vibration going on above your head, especially around the equator at noon. And this one slice of the atmosphere gives us insight into what's going on at the bridge between Earth and space, the ionosphere layer. The scale shown here is megahertz, millions of vibrations per second. And let's bring up the latest image and show the anomaly gram. So here's the anomaly gram showing anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median. Some wild swings there around places like northern South America. You can see sudden shifts from high to low frequency anomaly. Keep in mind, folks, the South Atlantic anomaly is now more like the South American anomaly. It's located about here, sort of in the south middle portion of the South American continent. And it is indeed the weakest point in Earth's magnetosphere. So you will see constant anomalies located in that spot over the South Atlantic anomaly. It's just the way the fields work. In any case, there's the latest image. 1245 Universal Time Ionogram. Things looking fairly normal at that moment. And there is the anomaly gram anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median. And let's blast through some more stuff. Have you checked out smashamash.com, the homepage? Highly recommend you check out this video. Smashamash.org presents The Sun Part 3. Yeah, it's got Moonlight Sonata. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance if you've never been to the homepage. Were you aware that we're in the process of writing a paper to explain the mechanism underlying the solar cycles? It's true, folks. It's true. Thanks to the Smash team for supporting our efforts. Smashomash.com slash Smash team if you want to support the channel. We need your help getting the videos out there. The algorithms don't seem to be doing it. And we replaced Patreon with something superior. So we still do have Patreon. You can still contribute that way. You're just not going to get any content. So please sign up at the gold or silver level or even the gold annual paid up subscription level at smashamash.com. Maybe pick up some merch. There's been a shakeup in the best selling. We'll just scroll up here and not really comment. Keep in mind, folks, the merch is designed for what people want, not necessarily what we want to say. <laughs> Although things like forgive, remember, and hold accountable are indeed words of wisdom. So thanks for everybody who's picked up merch. Let's sort this by order of best selling to show you what the shakeup is. This is what we call bandwagon advertising. Those are the three top sellers. By the way, make sure you follow us on Twitter if you haven't. We just put up some 
fascinating tweets once again. And I'd like to say shout out to Mr. Underbelly. Yes, always some great posts there. Check out his YouTube channel, The Hidden Underbelly 2.0. He doesn't need our help. He's got 53,000 subs. But perhaps we need his. And thanks for featuring our content on your channel. We'll be looking to do a collabo soon with Mr. Underbelly. Also, he's on Twitter. And he brought up a great point. And here's a little point about cosmology that I'd like to share with you, the viewer. I think it's a lot more likely that there is life on Venus than on Mars. Venus is a rich soup of chemicals. Mars is a desolate, sterile-looking death trap. So while Venus is very inhospitable to human life, who knows what's going on below the surface? Of course, it's quite turbulent in terms of its atmosphere, and it's quite hot on its surface, but what could be going on underneath? There are extremophiles on Earth that could probably survive the surface environment of Venus, and apparently, a Russian ufologist seems to think that there has been life already seen there. So once again, yet another reason to follow us on Twitter. And we've actually retweeted this article. So if you want to read that, just head to twitter.com slash smashamash. You'll find it right at the top of our recent tweets, right below our pinned tweet featuring some original music. And Golden Cat Productions is now all over the internet. Look for more original music coming up. Here come additional bonus features. How about the latest imagery from the ground-based observatory at Cerro Tololo? So here's Cerro Tololo, Spain. I mean Chile. Cerro Tololo, Chile. My mistake. Huge plasma filament up here in the north. So likelihood of additional coronal mass ejections continues, folks. Remember, you don't need a solar flare to see a coronal mass ejection. Let's take a look at the latest intensity gram and latest magnetogram. There's the latest intensity gram. Sunspot 2941 is large and largely in charge. Uh, this one down here, still beta class, but quite small. 2946, still quite significant. Still beta class, still capable of producing flares. There are the fields of that one, whatever it's called. There's 2946. And there's 2941, the star of the star. We'll close out with some more animated images here. How about the GO-16 SUVI 304 angstroms wavelength? Coronal mass ejection headed toward Earth. If you haven't heard about it, make sure you watch our previous video, our Fields and Features segment. There were three significant flares and a lot of ejecta coming out of both the Earth and non-Earth side of the Sun. There's a composite that's 193 and 211 angstroms from the SDO. Here's another composite. It's 171 and 131 angstroms. And last but not least, 94 angstroms, one of the better wavelengths through which to view solar flares. So you can see those brightening events. Those are the solar flares that we're talking about. Thanks for tuning in, and may that solar wind be at your back. Opinions expressed in this video are not necessarily the opinions of Smash News Network, least busted name in news.